In today's video, we're going to be talking about the propane gas lines that get connected to your food truck or your food trailer cooking equipment. How you can make your own if you want to make your own and not buy the ones that are pre-made. So in that video, that's what we're going to be covering on the video series, how to build your food truck with me, Frank Baltiers, where step by step, we convert a trailer, empty trailer into a full mobile kitchen on wheels. But something that I wanted to show you real quick that I was thinking about for a couple years that I finally got done this weekend is bang. This step right here, I'll tell you this, it's one of those things that you don't know you need until you know you need it. And it sucks to get into this trailer sometimes because it's such a huge gap between the floor and the doorstep. So this thing uh, hopefully comes in handy. I just had it custom made this weekend by a buddy of mine that his dad does a lot of metal work. So he made it by hand. He came out, measured it, made sure that it was specifically for this trailer. So maybe if you want something like that, I don't know yet. Uh, we might be able to make one for you and then we can ship it out to you. But uh, I'm not going to promise that yet. Let me make sure that this one works 100% and it functions properly. So far, so good. But we want to give it a couple more steps, a couple more uh, wear and tears on here. But let's get started on this video. How to build your own gas propane lines for your food truck or your food trailer. Again, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. And always, thank you for sharing the video. Frank Baltiers, how to build your food truck. Let's get started now. So here's that little propane contraption that we made, almost like the main artery of everything that's gonna feed our equipment and our propane water here. What I have to do here is cut this one right here. It's a flex, uh, three quarter inch flexible propane line made by, give me two seconds. It's made by Home Flex. I bought it at Home Depot. And this, these are the connectors that come with it. Well, they don't come with it. You have to buy them separate. Home flex right there. This one is a three quarter inch male. And what I have to do here, um, since I added this right here, which is a brass gas valve, almost like a shutoff. I added it on every single exit. That way it almost has like a emergency shutoff, so to speak. Uh, just so it, more, more of a safety precaution thing, to be honest, more than anything. What I have to do here, if I can have you guys join me here with the camera as much as I can is I have to cut this so we just take this little machine which is called a quick release tube cutter right there inch and an eighth we just kind of give it some couple spinner roonies you want to make sure that you get it on the valley once you buy this you'll see that it has almost like a ridge and a valley pretty noticeable once you get it and then you just kind of spin it around, making sure that you cut the metal that's inside right there. We're just gonna keep going and going and going. And then you wanna make sure that you get a nice clean cut right there inside the valley. And then you wanna read the instructions that come with the home flex connectors. I'm not taking responsibility of you guys installing this correctly. Make sure that you read it and you work at your own um, experience. If you feel you didn't do a good connection, make sure you hire someone that does brass fittings for a living or gas lines for a living, but you technically, according to my health department, don't need a licensed plumber to do it. So it's up to you and your health department and what they require. But if we read on the instructions, they want you to cut back two valleys. So you see one valley, two valleys. So we're gonna take our utility knife and kind of go around there and this is how you cut it according to the instructions. So I make my own propane hoses that go to my cooking appliances in my food truck. And if you want to make your own, then this is the video for you to watch. If you want to buy them pre-made, then you can buy them pre-made as well. The downfall of buying them pre-made is that they are in fixed lengths. You can't cut them you know, or make them longer, make them shorter. They are what they are. So you got to make sure that you order them correctly, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. The prices I'm not too familiar with. I just like to buy the, the 25 foot roll of this home flex right here. So I make my own ends on it. Typically they're the male ends of the home flex three quarter inch flexible gas line. So I'm going to show you how to make that right now. If you can see here, you have these two ridges. Uh, they have ridges and valleys on these hoses. 
So if you you got to read your your instructions, number one, make sure that you feel comfortable doing it, number one. And if you don't feel comfortable, then hire a professional. I would say a plumber is who would do this type of work because they usually do gas lines and water lines. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. However, uh, this is not a like this is how you do it exactly. So make sure that you do your own due diligence. I don't want you guys to blow up and be like, hey, well, he told me how to make that hose. So make sure that you guys do it correctly and you double check your work. I've done it on two trailers and I have not had any issues. So that's why I'm kind of telling you what I'm doing. Just don't hold me accountable to it. So if you hold uh, here, the ridges, they have ridges and valleys. So right here, you have a little ridge, you have a little valley, ridge and a valley. So on the instructions, it, it says to go back all the way to the ridges. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take it back. It's just gonna take it back to the second one. That's what the instructions say. So take it back to the second ridge. Make sure that you're careful with your knife. You don't wanna slice off a finger there. You just kinda of like give it a, just enough to cut the insulation on the hose here. Alrighty, so there we are. And then we just take our utility knife, give it a slice up right there. Boom. And then you just kind of peel it back. If you miss some spots on there, I'm literally just kind of stabbing it into the into the thing there. So there you go. If you could forget some spots there, just take your knife, literally just press it in, and it should come right off. There it is. And then we're gonna connect this to our appliances. I did my propane one right now, my propane water heater. All right, so there you go. That's how it should end up. You should have two ridges that are, two valleys that are exposed. The next part is this. The next part is super important. You wanna make sure on the set here, they give you like a little set. It comes with three pieces. It comes with the end cap. It comes with this little washer thing, like a little crimper, and then it comes with the end. So you wanna make sure that you always put this first because that's what's gonna hold the connector in. So make sure you slide that in. Then you have this little crimp ring. This one goes on the first valley. Ah, it fell. This one goes on the first valley right there. As such, if you guys can see, there's two exposed valleys. And we're just gonna go to the first one right up top. Then you take your channel locks and you just squeeze this so it grabs onto the valley. You can't really over squeeze it because it's not gonna let you do it. I'm trying to watch it and do it at the same time. So, ah. alrighty. There it is. You just gotta give it a couple squeezes. There it is. That way it fits nice into that, uh, into that valley. It should almost kind of lock into place there. I'm trying to show you as much as I can, guys. Alrighty, so then that should be snug right there. So this should not come off anymore. And then this is gonna go right into this part. Let me show you where it's gonna get connected to that we were on the same page and I did it to both ends already because this is going over to like a little gooseneck, like a question mark almost like that. So this is gonna go to the fryer. So let me show you how I connect it and where I connect it to. So there we go, that's, a, that's how this is gonna look. Let me take out this little ugly thing that's there. This is, again, that propane three-quarter inch hose that goes to the propane water heater. Now let's finish up these three, these three on the left-hand side. Oh man, I forgot to put this little connector on here. Darn it, I just noticed that. So we're gonna have to put this little connector right there for the gas line. I just saw because I was looking at the video that I forgot to put that one there, which is fine, it doesn't really matter. So let's finish that one up really quick. Just wanted to show you how that looks. And then we're gonna connect these three equipments back here. We got the fryer right there. That's um, this connector right there. And then there's a couple more right back here. Ah. And we have to kind of scoot that up. You see how it's budding up to the stainless steel right there, that red cap? So we have to move that machine up. That way it's not budding up. We have to put a 90 on there, a three quarter inch 90. This is how it looks back here. This is the fryer, I guess you could call it output or the input where it's going to come in from the propane tanks we're going to use our blue monster thread tape uh, thread uh, sealant right there and then we're going to put this 90 as well right there just like that you guys can see it it's going to go like that 
and then we're gonna hook up a propane hose. This one actually we might turn it this way so we just can get some extra and then kind of go that way with it. And then kind of just kind of loop de doop around and come and connect it to there. So there it is, there is the propane input. We're gonna go with the propane hose that way, just kind of do a little donut and then come this way over here to probably this bottom one right there. Alrighty, so on here I have all these made already. These are all my little shutoffs that go to my appliances. Actually this one, I'm gonna put it up to the top right there. So all they do literally is they kind of, they just squeeze in. Ah, just, hold on. There it is, it's so hard to do just with one hand sometimes. So you just kind of twist it on as such like this. Come on baby, see it's hard to do with one hand, I'm sorry. I'll be right back. Alrighty, there we go, all I did was twist this on. I just needed both hands to hold it. All right, so there you go, I'm just twisting this on. I'm gonna obviously tighten that up. And then this is gonna go over to this one right here. I just made it really long. Oops, sorry. I just made it really long. That way, if you need to pull out the fryer, this one is a fryer. I've never worked with the fryer ever in my life, but uh, that's what we put on this one is a fryer. So let's connect that to this. This is the same thing. This end goes just like that. And then that connects to that part right there on the 90. This, I had to install it. This was not on here. So I put that after the fact. So that's kind of how we connect our appliances on here. And then we could just, Always shut it on, turn it on, shut it off, whatever we want. Easy peasy.